January 28, 1986, Cape Canaveral, Florida. A bright, clear morning. Thousands gather to witness history. A routine shuttle mission that had captured the imagination of an entire nation, where a teacher would go where no civilian had gone before. The space shuttle Challenger was about to embark on its 10th mission, STS-51L. It was a symbol of the ongoing American endeavor to master space travel. The first reusable spacecraft had already completed several successful missions, promising the future of routine trips to orbit. NASA's space shuttle program was built on the belief that space could be explored more regularly, economically, and efficiently. Since the program began, it had achieved incredible milestones, deploying satellites, advancing science, and carrying astronauts into the heavens. But before we dive in, some of the details in this story are disturbing and may not be suitable for all audiences. So viewer discretion is strongly advised. As I always remember to hit the like button, share the video, subscribe, and turn on post notifications to stay up to date with the channel. All right, let's dive into the video. At the heart of Challenger's final mission was a crew of seven astronauts, seven remarkable individuals chosen to push the boundaries of exploration. Commander Francis Scobie was a veteran pilot with a deep love for flight. His quiet leadership would guide the crew through the mission. Beside him, pilot Michael Smith, an experienced aviator, brought technical expertise that had made him a natural fit for the mission. Mission specialists Ronald McNair, Ellison Onizuka, and Judith Resnick each brought unique expertise to the mission. McNair, a physicist and pioneer as one of the first African Americans in space, had an unshakable passion for discovery. Onizuka, an engineer, was the first Asian American astronaut to fly in space, representing hope and progress. Resnick, an electrical engineer, was one of the few women to fly in NASA's early missions, known for her brilliance and dedication. Yet, it was payload specialist Krista McAuliffe who made this mission special to so many. She was not just an astronaut. Krista was a high school teacher, chosen from thousands of applicants to become the first civilian to fly in space. Her lessons from space were meant to inspire a new generation of dreamers and explorers. Her presence on the mission symbolized that space was no longer the domain of just scientists and pilots. Space was for everyone, teachers, students, and everyday people. The space shuttle program represented NASA's vision for the future of space exploration, a reusable spacecraft designed to carry astronauts and payloads into orbit, return, and be relaunched again. The shuttle was seen as a bridge to the future, a future where space travel would become as routine as air travel. From its first launch in 1981, NASA's shuttle fleet had flown numerous missions, placing satellites in orbit, conducting scientific experiments, and helping to build international partnerships. With each successful launch, the idea of a permanent human presence in space seemed closer to reality. By 1986, Challenger had completed nine successful missions. Its crew had deployed communication satellites, participated in spacewalks, and carried out critical research. But beneath the success of the shuttle program, there were signs of danger. One of the shuttle's most crucial components the O-rings, rubber seals designed to prevent hot gases from leaking out of the solid rocket boosters, was a point of concern. Engineers at Morton Theocol, the company responsible for the solid rocket boosters, had identified the O-rings as a potential weak point. Under certain conditions, the rings could become brittle, losing their ability to properly seal the joints in the boosters. On the night before the Challenger launch, temperatures at Cape Canaveral dropped to an unseasonable low, reaching below freezing. Engineers at Morton Theocol warned NASA that the cold weather could compromise the O-rings and urged the launch to be delayed. Despite the concerns raised by engineers, NASA was under pressure. The Challenger mission had already been delayed several times, and the public, especially schoolchildren across the nation, was eagerly awaiting the first teacher in space. In the early morning hours of January 28, 1986, NASA officials met with engineers to decide the fate of the launch. The warnings were clear, but so was the desire to maintain the schedule. The decision was made to proceed. 
engineers at Morton Thiokol were overruled, and the launch was scheduled to take place at 11.38 a.m. At 11.38 a.m., the engines ignited. The ground rumbled as Challenger roared to life and lifted off into the sky. Millions watched on live television, cheering as the shuttle ascended toward the heavens. For the first 73 seconds, everything seemed normal. The shuttle climbed steadily, its twin rocket boosters firing as planned. But hidden from view, a small, almost imperceptible flaw had already occurred. A plume of dark smoke escaped from the right solid rocket booster. A microscopic breach in the O-ring allowed hot gases to escape. The frigid temperature had caused the O-ring to fail, and the heat began to eat away at the metal casing of the booster. At 73 seconds, Challenger broke apart. The spacecraft, along with its seven crew members, was gone. In an instant, hope turned to tragedy. Millions of viewers around the world watched in shock as the shuttle disintegrated before their eyes. The explosion sent the crew cabin still intact, hurtling toward the Atlantic Ocean. There were no survivors. In the days that followed, an intense investigation began. The Rogers Commission, appointed by President Reagan, sought to understand how such a tragedy could have occurred. It was soon revealed that the O-ring failure had been the direct cause of the explosion, and that NASA had been aware of the potential risk for years. The loss of Challenger was a profound tragedy, one that forced NASA to reevaluate its practices and commit to ensuring the safety of future missions. The space shuttle program was suspended for nearly three years as changes were made to prevent such a catastrophe from happening again. But the legacy of Challenger lives on, not in the failure of the mission, but in the courage of its crew. They dared to reach beyond our world, to teach us, to inspire us, and to remind us of the costs of exploration. In the wake of the Challenger disaster, NASA faced its greatest crisis. The agency that had put men on the moon now grappled with a devastating loss of life and public trust. To dismantle anything. There are some ministries that require specific and targeted attention, and that's not new. We did it some time ago with, um, with our lawyers. NASA initiated a comprehensive review of its safety culture, decision-making processes, and technical systems. The solid rocket boosters were redesigned, and a new safety office was established to provide independent oversight. The O-rings at the heart of the disaster were completely redesigned. New joint heaters were added to ensure they would function properly even in cold temperatures. On September 29, 1988, over two and a half years after the Challenger disaster, the Space Shuttle Discovery stood ready on Launch Pad 39B. The eyes of the world were once again on Cape Canaveral. As Discovery soared into the heavens, it carried with it not just its crew, but the hopes and fears of a nation. This successful launch marked a new chapter for NASA, one of renewed commitment to safety and the enduring spirit of exploration. Across the nation, tributes to the Challenger crew took shape. Schools, streets, and even asteroids were named in their honor. But perhaps the most poignant memorials were the educational initiatives launched in their memory. The families of the Challenger astronauts came together to establish the Challenger Center for Space Science Education. These centers, spread across the United States and beyond, continue the mission of inspiring young minds to pursue science and exploration. The Challenger disaster forever changed the landscape of space exploration. It taught us humbling lessons about the risks of pushing boundaries and the price of complacency. But it also reinforced the importance of our quest to understand the cosmos. Today, millions of students who weren't even born when Challenger flew its final mission are pursuing careers in science, engineering, and space exploration. They carry forward the torch lit by seven brave souls on that cold January morning. The Challenger disaster left an indelible mark on the American psyche. It shattered the illusion of routine space travel and forced a nation to confront the risks of exploration. For a generation of schoolchildren who watched the launch live, the disaster was a stark lesson in the fragility of human endeavors. In the wake of Challenger, NASA's approach to risk assessment underwent a radical transformation. These changes led to improved mission safety, but also slowed the pace of launches, highlighting the delicate balance between progress and caution in space exploration. 
The Challenger disaster had ripple effects far beyond American shores, sparking a global conversation about the future of space exploration. The International Space Station, a collaboration between 15 nations, stands as a testament to this new era of cooperation, born partly from the shared grief of Challenger. Out of tragedy came inspiration. A generation of scientists, engineers, and explorers cite the Challenger crew as their motivation for pursuing careers in space and science. The Challenger Center for Space Science Education, founded by the families of the lost astronauts, has reached over 5 million students, instilling values of teamwork, problem solving, and courage in the face of adversity. As we stand on the brink of a new era in space exploration, with plans for returning to the moon and venturing to Mars, the lessons of Challenger continue to guide us. The story of Challenger is ultimately one of hope. Hope that rises from tragedy. Hope that fuels our quest for knowledge. And hope that propels us to the stars. In the end, the Challenger mission did not fail. It continues through every student inspired to reach for the stars, through every astronaut who risks their life for discovery, and through every one of us who looks up at the night sky and dreams of what's possible. The Challenger crew, Francis, Michael, Ellison, Judith, Ronald, Gregory, and Krista, gave their lives not just for space exploration, but for the advancement of human knowledge and the spirit of discovery that defines us as a species. They slipped the surly bonds of Earth to touch the face of God. In doing so, they taught us the true meaning of courage, of sacrifice, and of the unquenchable human desire to explore the unknown. As we continue to push the boundaries of space, we carry their legacy with us. In every launch, every mission, and every new discovery, the spirit of Challenger lives on, reminding us that the greatest tribute we can pay to explorers lost is to keep exploring. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, then check out these videos on the screen now. If you have a topic suggestion, please send it to the email in the description. And as always, remember to like, comment, share the video, and subscribe to our channel. And remember, the only thing scarier than these stories is missing out on our next video.